guys. So, <laughs> welcome to the Thompson <laughs> with Matt and myself. Okay, we're just gonna wait until a few of you guys say hi and join us. Why don't you put that yep. this there? Yeah, and then I'll do mine. If you guys only saw what's going on here right now with all these mobiles. Hey everybody, here, here with Natal. I'm just gonna wait for you people to hop on here. Awesome. Too many phones. Yeah, too many phones. Okay. <laughs> I think we can get this to work. Yeah. There we go. Okay, amazing. Well, welcome, guys. So, here's how this went down. You guys are probably wondering, well, you know, how did me and Matt, you know, decide to collaborate on something like this? But it was actually me who reached out to him. Um, I recently have had a lot of men ask me, "Do men do Arbon? And what is this Arbon thing all about?" So I decided, I mean, who else am I going to go to than this guy who's a rock star right here? And he's like, yeah, me. And, and um, kind of interviewed him. I want everyone to hear how Arbonne is a business, not only for females, but really it's a business for anybody who wants to work it as a business. So I wanted to start off by asking you to share a little bit about what your story is because I know that Arbonne isn't the only thing that you do. So what else? Yeah, do you know? absolutely. So um, really, I mean, when I was uh, a lot younger, my desire in my future was always to kind of be the type of person to not really just work for, for somebody for the rest of my life. So I've always kind of had that ambitious ambition and that drive to create multiple streams of income in my life. So um, right now, what my life looks like is Arbonne is kind of plan A. So this is kind of the stable of the day to day. And it's because of Arbonne that I've been able to do things like leave the corporate world, which I've been in for, uh, for 10 years as of uh, earlier this year. But also, too, it's allowed me to do some other things that I've really wanted to do. Um, and that's I've got two uh, growing e-commerce businesses. I'm also in real estate investing as well. So I try to keep busy, but the thing is it's all on my terms. And that's the key. That's the key for me. Amazing. So when you when did you hear about Arbonne? So uh, actually it's been so what, 2018 now, it goes all the way back to 2010 actually. So it's been about eight years uh, since Arbonne came into my life. And how were you introduced or who talked to you about <laughs> So I have an older sister, her name's Natalie, and at the time she was uh, she was a teacher. And uh, it's funny because I always say, I don't know if she was just like really smart or like really naive because she never actually asked me to, to do Arbonne. She just approached me because she was thinking of doing it. And it's funny, I ran a business for the first time when I was 20 years old and she actually used to work for me. So it was great, boss and my older sister around, loved that part. But I was confused because I never thought that I'd, uh, I could do business opportunity to come out of her bed. So she kind of came to me and said, hey, I'm thinking of doing this Arbonne thing. Can you take a look at it? Just, to, just let me know if it's a good idea. And uh, so I really looked at it as if I was going to buy a business, if I was going to buy a franchise. I've been, I was franchising for 10 years. And uh, that's, I just kind of did the due diligence as if it was any other business I was going to buy. And I was blown away. And I recommended that she jump into it. Okay. Because at the time, I was in the corporate world and working 100 hours a week. I had no space for myself or to take on anything else, let alone. And uh, once she kind of got into it, and I thought, wow, like, she's having a ton of success. As far as I was concerned, I had no idea what she was doing. <laughs> but it was... I, I, I find I, that quite yeah. a bit. I mean, just the other day, some, I, I just came up to me and he's like, okay, so what exactly do you do? <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah, and she just basically was having the success. And I was like, I can do this. And I saw the, there was just so much abundance coming from what she was doing, so much positivity. And uh, I thought, this is kind of what I'm looking for in my life. Now, I didn't, I, full disclosure, especially for any of the dudes watching, <laughs> Never did I foresee myself representing personal care products or being part of the network marketing industry. But you know, sometimes things come in a way you don't expect. Right? And uh, I looked at it objectively, and I thought, you know, this is something I can do. And I see the opportunity over anything else. And that's that's kind of how I got got into it. So, okay, so you jumped in in two thousand two thousand and eleven, October two thousand eleven. So this is seven years this month actually. Wow. Yeah. 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 Okay, and in two thousand eleven, when you jumped in, how did your journey go? Like how? Because today you are a VP. Yeah, regional vice president. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So basically, when I got started, um, it was funny because I know a lot of people when they look at this, ah, oh, yeah, I like, know they were no for a while, and sometimes it took a couple of exposures before they really thought, you know, this is something for me. Uh, I really, when I did the research, I saw it instantly and I thought, great opportunity. Now, my hesitation wasn't around the opportunity, it was around me, like, could I do this? But once I kind of got through all that, I realized very quickly, I said to my sister, I'm like, I will do this. 
at one point. It's just, for me, timing was everything at the point again. I was basically running uh, uh, the province of Alberta for the company I was with, just really kind of making sure that success was being had in my, in my current role. And I just, uh, you know, once I finally got to the point where I started the business, uh, which was October 2011, it was, uh, it took off very quickly. So I actually left that job and started my own business and I grew area manager in four months. So because I knew it was just about helping other people and adding value to others. Um, and so I built a team really quickly and we took off. Did you um, find, for you, what was your biggest objection? Did you find that ego really got in the way, especially in the beginning? I find yeah. that that's something that a lot of men and, and females, I mean, uh, have totally. a pretty big ego, totally. <laughs> <laughs> especially, you know, nine years ago. So right. it's something that you kind of had to fight with. Absolutely. And I always say, you know, the biggest thing was, uh, I mean, my biggest hesitation, I think everyone has hesitations when they consider something like this. But the reality is, uh, I just looked at it again objectively and at the opportunity. And I realized that my biggest obstacle is myself. I thought, you know, what are people going to think about me doing this? What could be perceived as a little lipstick company, <laughs> which is not that obviously. So the big thing was I had to get over myself. Um, it was just a matter of, again, pushing the ego aside and realizing that this is a phenomenal opportunity that can add a ton of value to other people's lives. And for that, you can, you can gain a ton of success that's time leveraged and create an asset in your life. That's yeah. the way I looked at it. So it was a matter of, there was a couple times of me getting over myself at the beginning, but I'm so thankful that I did. Okay. So, yeah. And you have a pretty big business with family. Like yeah. You have a family in your business. I think it's yeah. one, the one one of the biggest businesses that I know that have a lot of family. Totally. Involved. Yeah, it is. So awesome. how is that working with family? Yeah, so my sister's my sponsor. Uh, my mom is probably watching right now. Hi, mom. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's, a, it's a district manager for Rex and myself. And, uh, and uh, yeah, we have cousins. We have, uh, you know, aunts, uncles, and my aunt is the regional vice president as well. Um, I think we have, it's kind of like a moving target, but I think we have about 10 family members in the business. Wow. So yeah, I think we're a bit of an anomaly, but I'll take it. So. Yeah. So what would you say so for all the men that are watching this right now that are contemplating whether or not Argonne is something that could be a fit for them? What would you, like, what advice would you give them? Yeah, because well, I do have to, like, I yeah. have to say that when I first started Argonne, and I'm sure when I started in 2009, you started in 2011, yep. Argonne was mainly a skincare company, totally. right? Yeah. But I mean, I've seen things change and evolve throughout right. the years. Yep. And I would say today, it's very much so not only a skincare company, but a huge percentage is the nutrition. Absolutely. And yeah. men, that's something that they can maybe, you know, relate to more. Totally. The fact that it's a nutri you know, big nutrition company as well. For sure. And, and when, so when I was introduced to this, I mean, I just realized very quickly that uh, the main product that I got excited about around 2011, the nutrition was really starting to, to kind of grow and become more focused. Just one of the things I loved about it was the fact that I just realized very quickly that I'm already buying all these products from somewhere. Anyways. And for anyone watching, whether you like it or not, you're already a consumer in this industry and you will be for the rest of your life. You're buying personal care products from somewhere. And I realized that and I thought, if I just redirect my spending uh, into what I got educated about on a healthier, safer option in terms of products, uh, and just redirect that spending into myself financially, for anybody, it just makes sense. Um, I, to me, it was a no-brainer in that sense. So I think in terms of for, for males considering this or looking at this and wondering, hey, is this something that men can do? I think that, you know, I'm generalizing a little bit, but I think men typically look at this and are appealed to it for the business opportunity. And that's purely what I you know, was looking at it for, for myself. Um, but I do know that in order to have a good business, you need to have a strong product or service. And I realized through the research and due diligence I did that our bond sector none. So the biggest thing is we have an amazing product that can add a ton of value to people's lives. But I also know that more people go to bed at night worry about their bank account than their skincare. So I saw that as the opportunity to really impact people's lives. And for that, you, you, you can be generating, um, you know, very... Uh, very nicely for, for helping other people. And that's all really what we are as vice presidents is we just want to a lot of people do this, right? This is just a vehicle. And for any guys, I would just recommend if you're considering this, it is an amazing opportunity uh, to create an asset in your life, to create uh, income streams, and uh, really just create a lot of choice. And that's all I'm looking for. Okay, last question, and then we are done. <laughs> yeah. What, how has your life changed, or what's different today? You know, after yeah. you started Arbonne and just what is different for you? 
Yeah, so at a young age, again, I was fortunate enough to, you know, be put in front of a lot of uh, opportunities for personal growth and development, running a business at a young age, had amazing mentors and coaches, and, uh, you know, I really got into reading for a purpose of, you know, developing my myself and kind of my perspective on things um, for abundance and growth and be able, being able to create choice in life. And uh, really, what it's done is it's allowed me to think big. And I saw Arbonne as a piece of the puzzle, as a vehicle to allow me just to create choice in life. And in my perspective, what else does anyone want than the ability to choose? And I know, you know, and obviously that ties into money. I mean, money's not the most important thing, but it helps to give yourself some more choice. And so that's where, uh, you know, I, I kind of looked at it and said, hey, I want to be in a position where I am able to live a life by design and control my own time. Um, you know, I've had an amazing experience working for some great companies and working with some amazing people, but I wanted to get to the point where I was able to completely control my own time and uh, have complete control of, uh, you know, strong finances to back that up. So really, I'm kind of living my vision right now, being able to control my time. Um, again, great experience in the corporate world, but knew that I was going to be more fulfilled by doing my own thing. And, building businesses that really excited me and that's exactly what I'm doing right now. So I was able to leave the corporate world, was able to get into to real estate investing and purchase a couple houses within a couple of years just as a bar bond. And uh, yeah, spending time doing some cool things, traveling and, uh, and spending time around amazing people that are doing big things. So, yeah. And I'm just going to, before we go, yeah. um, one yeah. last thing. I feel like there is um, a big you know, misconception out there in terms of the income potential. A lot of people think or assume or maybe they've heard from a friend or kind of heard from their parents that this is a business that you know is, is mainly for stay-at-home moms who are looking to bring in 200 500 dollars extra per month so right. maybe just talk about the average um income yep. in terms of the, the compensation plan yeah so absolutely in, yeah, so basically, the one of the things that I loved about this when I was taking a look at it for myself was, you know, I looked at it again very much from a business perspective and looked at, you know, how does the money work, right? And one of the things that I loved is the only way that money is made, first of all, is when product is sold, which means that there's value being exchanged for money. There's none of that, like, hey, if you get started, we're going to make all the money. And there's none of that. And that's what I love, the integrity of the compensation plan and how this is set up. Um, yeah, I love the fact that it was very simple too. There's only four levels of management. I've seen other compensation plans with like 25 levels, super crazy, and it didn't make sense. But with this, again, uh, first level management's district manager. So the average across Canada, you're making a couple hundred bucks, maybe about $300 or so, but I've seen it range anywhere from zero. So if you're not doing the work, you're not getting paid. This is an effort-based business. Uh, but I've seen you know district managers uh, make all the way up to about $1,500 a month. And that's part-time effort, aside from what your life looks like on a current day-to-day -day basis. So it's just a matter of weaving it into your business and being deliberate about it. Um, next level from there is area manager. Um, average income is about uh, fourteen hundred dollars a month. Ranges anywhere from eight to eight hundred to about four thousand dollars a month. I've seen some area managers do, uh, and we're not talking a long time to get there. I think the, the company average in Canada is about sixteen, seventeen months to get there. I got there in four. Again, it was just a matter of how quickly. Uh, I got there in nine. Nine months. Okay. So again, everyone's journey is different. Um, next level. Is, yeah, there we go. Yeah, but you beat me to the top. So. But uh, regional vice president is the next level. A lot of people call that Mercedes Benz level, so that's why you see a lot of people driving around in white Mercedes. Uh, it's kind of just uh, one of the cool, cool perks of, uh, of being with Arbon. But at that point, the, the, the money really can get game changing for a lot of people, and that's where a lot of people find a lot more choice in their life. Average monthly income is about, I think, about sixty-eight hundred dollars or so across Canada, but it can range anywhere from about four thousand all the way up to about fourteen thousand or so as a regional vice president, uh, and then national vice president, which is Latal is at that level. And uh, average monthly income across Canada is about nineteen thousand dollars a month. So we're not just talking about hey, a couple bucks here and there. Like this can be the opportunity for someone to have that. I've heard people say extra shoe money or Lululemon money or whatever you're looking for, or it can be that yeah, life changing as some people say gangster money or right? <laughs> whatever it is that you're looking for. But it comes with work, obviously, um, and it's just a matter of you know saying hey, I want more in life. I want to step out of my comfort zone and develop and grow into the person that becomes. A national vice president, right? So that's a that's a bit of a peak as to the type of money, and I think a lot of people don't realize that that is the opportunity, and that's what is uh, in anyone's grasp if, if they want it. Thank so, you so yeah, much. No problem. No problem. Guys, if anything intrigued you, if um, anything inspired you tonight, then definitely get in touch with your independent consultant, and they can get you more information. Thanks, Matt. Yeah, no problem. Awesome. That was fun. Okay, bye, guys. See you, everyone.